But now I want to turn to talk about Ann Coulter. For folks that don't know, Ann Coulter is a right-wing, previously super pro-Trump, now anti-Trump, actually, uh, kind of nationalist, anti-immigration, conservative columnist and author, uh, who used to be really popular, you know, 10 years ago. She was like the, the face of the right or whatever, and now she's not so much. She's definitely lost some relevance, but she spoke at Cornell, where she's actually an alum, uh, and she was actually a, a bunch of students attempted to, uh, students or outside protesters to be to be determined on that um, attempted to interrupt her speech and actually stop her from speaking. I want to roll a clip we've got from the Washington Examiner that shows you the tactics these activists were using. Take a listen to this. Yes. We don't want you to speak here. Your words are violent. There are threats. You cannot be speaking here. Thank you very much. We have to drown you out, but I'm here to listen to you. It's not worth it to converse with you. We do not want your ideas here. Leave. Leave. You can take me out. Leave. Leave. We don't want your ideas here. If this takes more than 60 seconds next time, I'm going to wait for it. Your words are violence. Your words are violence. Violence is So Hannah, I find this pathetic. This, your words are violence. We don't want you to speak here. First of all, words aren't violence unless you're emotionally fragile. Um, and in that case, you probably shouldn't be in college. You should probably be working on functioning like an adult. Um, but also, we don't want you to speak here. Well, clearly there's a room full of people that do want to hear what she has to say, whether to disagree with it, debate her in the Q&A, hash it out. Sure, I'm not personally a fan of most of what she has to say, but you don't get to superimpose your woke judgment onto the entire audience that they can't handle hearing these dangerous words. Anytime I see somebody trying to stop speech with this words are violence approach, I get a little sick to my stomach because I think that's one of the most pathetic arguments out there. It's a real intellectual cowardice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, I can't stand this kind of activity. And I feel like we see this increasingly on college campuses, especially, and it blows my mind. Like they're spending tons of money to bring in these speakers. It's their private property. I cannot believe that they continue to allow these people to act this way. They're children. They do not further discussion. This is not, you know, this is not productive for anybody. You're not doing anything to actually combat Ann Coulter's ideas or to push back on them, which by the way, I happen to not agree with her on a lot. You know, she's kind of a pretty far right to me sort of nut job. She was huge in the Clinton era. She hates Im immigration. Like I, I don't like Ann Coulter, but the best way to defeat Ann Coulter is to show up with a better argument than her or to not show up at all. You know, she's fading from relevancy, as you said, that the classroom only looked like it had about 50 people in it, period. Like, if you're really that worried about her and, and her ideas and want them to die out, just don't give her attention. Don't go see her speak. Don't make a huge deal out of it. Because honestly, when you act this way and throw a fit and it becomes a video and it becomes an online scandal, you're giving her more attention. You're giving her ideas more attention. So it's not only a ridiculous and vapid argument to say words are violence. It's also just completely counterintuitive. These people are some of the least strategic people I've ever met. I don't think, and I think it comes from a place of like, they're not thinkers. They don't know how to actually debate. They can't stand up for what they actually think or push back effectively on what they dislike. They just know they don't like it and they get mad when they have to hear it. And so they are trying to shut it down and shout it down. And I think that shows um, just, you know, where we're at as a culture. And I think that's sad because Ultimately, I'm very passionate about people being able to stand up for things and know why they believe what they believe and be able to articulate that. I think it's important. I think it's important to understand the other person's side, right? I always say that if I cannot say my opponent's argument as well or even better than they can, if I can't express it that well, then I'm not ready to debate them. I'm not ready to have that conversation. I need to do my due diligence and truly understand where another side is coming from and then make sure and check my premises that my argument is good and then come in and counter it, right? And that's how you actually change people's minds. And I think that's how you make sure that you're smart and a critical thinker and not falling for straw men as well. Yeah. And you had just a good point, such a good point a second ago when you said, 
uh, that nobody would have been talking about this. Out, that's so true. Literally nobody would be talking about outside of, you know, at the, the campus would be talking about Ann Coulter giving a speech at Cornell if this hadn't happened, if these activists hadn't tried to shout her down. And then it becomes like, I'm not a fan of Ann Coulter, but I will defend anybody's free speech. Right. Um, and that's why it's getting national coverage and news because of these idiots. And it's like they're the most counterproductive people ever, because by attempting to block her, which they were never going to successfully do, um, if anything, they just short term could delay her. They actually gave her a massive national spotlight. I've said before, I've spoken at campus a few a few times and I hope to do more in the future. The best thing that could happen to me would be to have somebody try to shout down or interrupt my speech. I'd make it a national news thing, you know, be all over TV the next day. These people aren't strategic thinkers uh, and they're so short sighted. But I, Hannah, I do actually want to give Cornell some credit. Uh, and this is based on reporting from the examiner, but officials at Cornell University said any student who was involved in shouting down a campus lecture by conservative commentator Ann Coulter last week could face discipline. Last week, Coulter was shouted down by a group of protesters who objected to her presence, but the university said it is prepared to discipline students who partook in the disruption. Here's a quote from a university official. The event was interrupted by attendees playing loud music and sound effects and shouting profanities. Eight college-age individuals were removed from the auditorium following Cornell protocols. All Cornell students among the disruptors will be referred for conduct violations. Cornell's actually apologized to Ann Coulter and said that this behavior doesn't reflect its values. I think that's great because I'm, you know, most of the time these universities are complicit in the anti-free speech atmosphere and policies. But in this case, they're uh, actually doing the right thing. So I think they deserve a little bit of credit for that. I love to see that because I think you're right. So often universities, public figures, platforms, they cave to this group of children, group of whiny babies who show up shouting and throwing temper tantrums and shutting down speech instead of checking them and putting them in their place. Like it's the vast majority of people don't behave like this. The vast majority of people are, you know, a bit more in depth, have the ability to actually entertain thoughts they don't hold, are able to have critical thinking and, and listen to people even when they disagree with them and then push back, you know, when they need to. This this kind of little minority is tyrannical and I'm tired of people uh, totally fading and just like giving them what they demand. So I love to see they're standing up. I hope more people follow suit. I think often they're afraid of like the blowback. It's like the blowback's not going to come. You're going to get way more support from people like you and I who love to see people actually taking a stand for free speech than you're ever going to get from these, you know, little mini Karens who want to run around and dictate what people can hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm.